Hello and good morning. This is a German and Finnish time meeting again for the second time. Yeah. And um, I'm welcoming Julia Suvenen for a second interview. As with the third, first one, we, um, yeah, there were some ideas to continue. So good morning, Tulia. Hi, Anja. And um, yeah, uh, regards from Finland, I'm here in the, in the forest. <laughs> There's a lot of snow outside. And luckily the internet connection seems to work. So yeah, I'm, yes. I'm excited yes. to see what happens. Yeah. The call. Yeah, it's beautiful to see the log in the background. It's like really, really um, landscape-like in your background. <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, thank you for being here again. Um, and I watched our first interview um, and I, I remembered so many feelings and experiences I had with you, with the workshops. And uh, like one practical thing I remember really precisely also with uh, on all levels, you know, remembrance also with a, in a picture and uh, in our sound. And so um, uh, one practice, um, I guess you call it, uh, I notice and I imagine. And mm. I remember that I had a, a practice partner who was I imagine who was a lot stronger than me and she was a lot she seemed a lot healthier than me and she was able to just tell me I see your nose and I, and I expect uh, and I imagine it's big and I felt like oh she's really getting really personal right away and I kind of uh well I froze to to call it with the with the technical term I really froze and when it was my term I had to make up things I wasn't even able to say, I, uh, I notice hmm, and I uh, imagine blank. You invited us to say that too, yeah, to yeah. say blank if there is blank. But I was so yeah. blank that I didn't dare to say blank and I started to make up something. So that is a memory that's still in my cells and you can, you can see yeah. how I'm getting excited telling about it. Yeah. So I would love you to um, talk about that part. <laughs> How you experience yeah. it? I'm, I'm though curious. Uh, what happens in your body right now, Anya? Now, when you you have been talking about this experience? Yes, when I say excited, I realize that it's mostly getting into movement, uh -huh. and I feel some some dizziness in my head. Uh -huh. And I'm, I make it difficult for myself to put my attention into the body. It's like I'm feeling this, this um, wish to move. And I imagine it's to not feel my inner body. It's like a bypassing, you know, moving quickly okay. and talking a lot to bypass, to not feel my body. Oh. And I feel, I feel my chest now my breath and some tingling here inside ah. how big is the area of the tingling is it the whole chest or just it yes part? it's more or less the whole chest uh -huh. mm -hmm. and is it would you consider it pleasant or unpleasant or quite neutral um it changed from the idea of unpleasant. If you ask so concretely, I can answer very concretely. Um, it changed from the imagination it's unpleasant towards an experience of neutral. And now watching it really precisely, I actually say, wow, feels nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's soft and now it spreads. I can sense spreading it into my legs even. Ah, how far in your legs does that sensation go? Um, mainly in my upper legs. Now it's okay. getting downwards to my lower legs too. Yes, and into my feet. Uh -huh. Is it all the way to your ankles? Yes, it's all the way to my toes. Toes even. Uh -huh. Yes. Curious, yeah. Yes, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. 
It's grounding. Yeah. Yeah. And it's calming. Huh. Mm -hmm. And it's putting me into a place where I uh, fear to not have any questions to you anymore. <laughs> uh, and then what happens? <laughs> and we can end the interview. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's a beautiful practice at once. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I I was curious as in you know, like honestly, we do check a lot what happens in the body, what what sensations we notice. And it seemed that you had something going on with that experience when you were talking. So I was curious. So, what what is happening in you and I, I appreciate you for staying with that and many times I judge that just taking it a bit slower helps to really notice what's going on there and maybe just yeah pausing a little and what I say is allowing whatever is yes I'm thinking mm. of, of that, uh, what I heard once, if you take a magnifying glass, you have something that you fear and you take a magnifying glass like a spider and you look at yeah. it really, really precisely, the fear just goes away because then yeah. you realize it's nothing you, you've got to fear. Right. And that's actually what happened with watching what's going on inside of me. That, that's nothing that I've got to fear. Yeah, my body actually is not the biggest, uh, uh, how you call it, Zabelzahn tiger in German, the, the tiger, you know, that, yeah, that yeah, yeah, bad tiger. My body is not, is, isn't that. And I have the experience that, um, I'm looking back on the experience that most of my lifetime I, I had subconsciously had the idea that my body and my thinking are the most both bad tigers inside of me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I hear you. And I guess when this this impulse comes, the 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 reptilian brain, the like the split of a second quick reaction doesn't really uh, separate what's real and what's not. It's just the 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 reaction comes, the, the freeze or uh, flight or whatever the, the fear reaction just happens yeah. and of course it's there for a reason it's taking care of our survival it's just a bit too crude and doesn't really like operate in these more fine-tuned ways uh, that might be more appropriate so it kind of overdoes its job and yeah just noticing that yeah things happen and nothing to fear about mm -hmm. and just allowing that reaction yeah 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 there's really a big difference in this first little practice which you also offer in the weekend shops workshops and then the uh for in in the further continuation of your workshops you go into one-in-one -in -one work within the group uh, where you yeah. invite one to say i resent you for to to get really personal mm -hmm. and and then you facilitate mm -hmm in yeah. comparison to that first practice where you invite the whole group to put up uh, in two pairs and and to go into that practice without concrete facilitation yeah yeah, yeah. and in, in that case with that woman who who um noticed your nose and imagined it was big did you ever tell her that i you resent her for saying that no, I actually do remember that I, for the rest of the weekend, I tried to um, to not contact her anymore because my nervous, nervous system was really so triggered. And so I, I knew she's stronger than me and I'm not yet uh, at that point to stand up to her. I, mm -hmm. I imagined I wasn't yet ready to stand up to her. And yeah. so my nervous system made me and I made myself like trying to not contact her anymore in that at that right. weekend yeah maybe it would uh, yeah, be different and I, now I, yeah and that is a story as well i mean she might have been totally fine like ah oh thanks for telling me oh okay like yeah. that nothing much would have come out of it 
and even like who is stronger not that's still a kind of concept it's not it, really real it definitely was a whole a big big construct and i was walking around yeah. with that at that time and yeah. made it impossible for myself to to um act in a different way yeah i was totally oh, you stuck. can still contact her <laughs> i don't i don't remember her name even i Right, no okay. who she was. <laughs> well, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if it's real, really alive, you can just put put a seed and do some hot seed work and say, hey, I resent you for saying you notice my nose and you imagine it's big. <laughs> and, just, and, and now I'm laughing, but I'm also meaning it serious and most likely it's not a long piece of work. Just getting it out of your system in a way that you're able to do right now. Yes. Yes, and it was only a small thing. And in the meantime, it's, it's a couple of years ago that this happened. In the meantime, I did some really good uh, nervous system work. So yeah. today, a little thing like that wouldn't trigger me anymore. It's bigger things that trigger me now. And uh, yeah. I guess that's also the reason why I, I came back and contacted you again, because I felt ready yeah. for getting into the bigger things as I yeah. see uh, the potential of this work. Mm -mm. As I see it much yeah. better than two yeah. or three years ago. And I don't, I don't personally mind if you're triggered by small things. I mean, whatever is important for you in the moment, it's important and it doesn't really matter what size of a thing because it's kind of anyway representing something else. Like, um, I'm not seen, I'm not heard, I'm not safe, something like that. So there is something bigger underneath anyway. It's just kind of an impulse. Yeah. 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 And I, I hear you that now it's different for you. What do you mm -hmm. get triggered about? Mm -hmm. I imagine that um, being honest always at the first step is always having being able to be honest with yourself. Yeah. So as yeah. long as you cannot be able uh, honest with yourself because of any um, trauma hurts in your nervous system, mm -hmm. you can't force a person to be honest to you if this person can't yeah. even be honest to him or herself. Yeah, yeah. And this, yeah. Is, this is a big question for me. So how, how can you reach those people who, who are stuck so much inside themselves? And, and, and I remember having that picture that I'm like locked in or locked down <laughs> inside yeah, yeah. myself kind of knowing there is something that wants to be seen but being so and and you would say probably it's a story but i felt the story was true that there was this part inside of me which wanted to be seen desperately mm -mm. and yeah. some other part was in between my seeing and it being seen so it, there was just no possibility and even your facilitation, mm. um, it, in in some parts, it was it, it really really helped me. That's why I still I'm still with it. And at some parts, mm. at that point of time in my life, it just wasn't able, yeah, to get yeah. over this boundary. Yeah, and and that's all right. It's um, it's a little little steps in my opinion that matter. So every time you're kind of a bit more aware of what's going on. Every time you're able to verbalize a bit more, that's that's a winning. So we are who we are and where we start where we start. And and what we are not aware, we're just not aware of it. So it's not even lying. It's just, we, had, we don't have awareness at the moment. And sometimes yeah. it's, the main thing is like, I don't know, I have no clue what's going on. And that's that's all right. And then that's an interesting point to explore. So yeah, it's, it's not about being perfect or, nobody's honest all the time this is not possible because there's yeah. so much going on yeah uh, or sometimes our protection or whatever the thing kicks in uh, our desire to be liked and then we kind of filter what we say so it's not about perfection it's really about the journey and the steps so yeah for for a person who has kind of a quite a few things they are not fully in touch with or a kind of a somehow stuck be stuck that's all right mm. There, it, this is not about like changing you or you need to be different and you can only do the work if you're already good enough. I mean, there's people, of course, who are not suitable to do group work and, and not suitable to do it right honestly at this moment. They might need something else first, like one-on-one -on -one work, for example. But other than that, 
you don't need to be ready or perfect or aware to come to a group. You can you can be who you are. And then we, we see what happens. Yeah. That's just that power of being seen and heard and realizing that even with all the struggles, people actually like us when we show ourselves. Yeah. Do you, in your own experience, know that place of freeze? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's not the, the most typical reaction for me. I'm more of a fight or flight person than a freeze person. Or sometimes I also do uh, the fourth op option fawn, like play, like, um, you know, like duck on the, on the back, play like um, innocent and harmless. So I, I can also do that. But yeah, I definitely have experience of being frozen. Um, and something, I don't know if it's really frozen, but something in my nervous system might draw a car crash five years ago no it's maybe even longer and and it's still a very and i have done some work around it and it's still very bodily experience like if i drive and there's any feeling of even slight movement in the back of the car i get a, a lot of sensations happening um it's more on a high alert state than freeze but i have definitely those kind of places where it's unusual, uh, out of the ordinary a bit for me. Yeah. Yeah, I had this morning, I had this picture of people coming from that place, as you say, from uh, fight or flight, who, are, mm -hmm. who have no problems getting into your uh, exercises of I resent you, I resent you. They are so good in resenting. And then there are those, those others who are more the freeze people Who are just perfect and I appreciate you, I appreciate you, I appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I remember how difficult for me it was to, to say I resent. And um, even if you invite, you invite, try, try it out, experience, yeah, yeah. Tr go for yeah. the experiment. Yeah. And um, I, when I, today it works even it, it works a lot better but back then I remember that I said like I resent you for saying what you just have said and I even got up louder with my voice and I yeah. still couldn't feel a resonance in my body because something was blocking yeah yeah so there was yeah. some belief structure inside of me you are not allowed to be angry yeah anger yeah. is a no-go <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. And and many of us have that. If, if we've been taught as kids that it's not all right to be angry, loud or expressive, it it's, it's a, can be a lot of work to allow to be in that place where, hey, it's all right. It's normal. Everybody gets angry. It's a, actually a physical sensation. Yes. I'm not even in control. But yeah, if, if, if you have learned that it's not all right, it's, it's, it can be a long journey to unlearn that doing because it's basically like rebelling against your parents who taught you something different and that is a scary place because we have been so dependent of our parents for so long as little kids and even a bit bigger kids Maybe we were basically needing our parents for survival so the, really the survival comes in yeah And expressing anger is survival too, because it's setting healthy boundaries. Like this is not all right with me. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's like the next step. If you integrate and allow that you can freeze, you can go into the next step. Integrate and allow that you can get angry. And if you integrated that, you can go a step further and lend your nervous system to someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where would you where where would you put in the um, the part of uh, sadness? Like I may be I may be sad looking back on what I experienced, and I can be loving to this hurt part inside of me. Well, I um, I do think sadness is part of normal human emotion, and it's good to kind of get it out because 
many times Sanna just a bit being stuck with the past events, like, oh, if it only was different or I'm so sad that that, and that happened. And then I judge it's good to just allow that sadness to come out. And if, if there is real griefing, then the best thing to do is just cry and let it flow and, and let it out. The, the only thing about sadness, I would say that sometimes um, for some people it's easier to be sad than angry. And then they instead kind of jump into the sadness and don't deal with the anger that is there too. Because anger and sadness tend to be very close to each other. Yeah. Or then the people who are just very good at being loud and angry and actually there is sadness there too. And they don't kind of allow themselves to go there. And this is sometimes a bit gender related to like, like uh, many women have been taught not to be angry and then they have struggled as uh, adults to go there. Whereas for many men in the upbringing, it's been more allowed to be loud and mm. not sad. Mm. So there is sometimes this as well. Yeah. So uh, would you like to introduce one or two more of those exercises you do to into getting uh, practical? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, we, we checked what happens in the body. So that's basically something we do quite a bit. And I just is, it's very use, useful on day to day basis. Um, then we talked about the I know this I imagine. So we could we could try that out a little to see how how that is to demonstrate and also uh, maybe have a replacing experience like healing re replacing experience for you uh, with the with the issue of that woman mentioning your nose and you having that reaction in you. So basically, the exercise is such that uh, we look at each other and then we. Um, look what we can notice with our eyes. So something we can physically notice in the other person. So give one noticing and then one imagination. And that is the first thought that comes to my head when I, when I look at you. And it may or may not be related to what I'm seeing. It doesn't matter. And basically the rule is that just first thought. So there is no good and bad or right and wrong. It's not about like evaluation as such just picking what is there are you ready to try yes okay yes and what happens in your body right now uh, i realize that i'm already making up sentences i'm preparing so i have something to say <laughs> okay okay and uh, so so how it goes is really you don't need to pre-plan it of course our system works that way we do plan but basically yeah. we just look each other and then see what comes, whatever yes, that is. Yes, yes, uh, yeah. I, I get it totally. And I, I realized that yeah. my body, I mean, thinking and preparing mentally is also a body, yeah? My head is also my body. So my body, my, the whole system is already getting prepared for that now. Uh -huh. It affects okay. my thinking and it, it affects definitely also my posture. It's like getting a little tense, yeah, uh -huh. in, the, in the butt. <laughs> a little tense in the butt, okay. And how is the chest, by the way, now? There's a lot going on earlier. Yes, it is a lot going on there. <laughs> it's tingling again, and it's again the idea tingling? that it's not comfortable. Not comfortable, uh-huh. Yes. Mm. It's like a little bit of pressure. It's not as free. It's, it's like a, uh -huh. a pressure tingling. Yeah. And where is the pressure especially right now? Is is uh, about the same place, and I also realize that it gets up towards my uh, throat, and uh -huh. it's affecting yeah. my voice cords. Yeah, uh -huh. so mm, I really have to stay clear with my voice cords. Mm. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. There. Bit of pressure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what about just before we start then? And this is something we do often as well, and. And I, I like it even just everyday life. Just do a little grounding. Notice the sole of your feet. Yeah. Just for a moment. All there is is the sole of your feet. The sensation of your feet against the floor. Mm. 
I'm smiling as I as the concentration on my feet causes a very cozy feeling in my tummy. Ah. Yeah. Mm. And, and do you notice the physical contact between your feet and the floor? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. Ah, let's breathe a little. Mm. Yeah, there's calmness, yeah. calmness coming up. Yeah. 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 And one very handy thing to, to kind of calm down the nervous system is to breathe in and then do a longer breathe out. So the rhythm is in for maybe about twice as long out than in, like maybe counting five in. Pause a little bit and then 10 out. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty simple. And somehow we people have forgotten that and how much we can shift in our bodies just with a bit of breathing. Also like in the, there's a busy day or stressful moments three minutes of breathing and noticing the sole of the feet. Yes, I appreciate you for saying three minutes breathing because I try it, for example, when I'm in, in my bed and I don't fall asleep right away, I try it. And after half an hour, half a minute, I say, why don't I get karma? <laughs> so yeah. it does take a couple of minutes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it could be that your head says, why didn't I get calmer? And there's already some shift in your system. <laughs> so your head is not very You're reliable. Clever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, laughing is also very calming. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So are you ready to uh, start? Yes. Okay. So, so I, what about you? I you say, say it to you or we say it in an we go back and forth, but you say first one thing you notice and one thing you imagine. One thing you notice about my physical being. Okay. Um, I notice your eyes and I imagine they look a little tired. I notice your mouth. I imagine you don't like eating. I notice your hair and I imagine I would like to take a closer look on the pictures behind you. I notice your eyes. I imagine you're very tentative. I notice one ear of yours and I imagine there is a second one too. I notice the corner of your eye and I'm actually, you think you're clever. <laughs> I notice when you smile, I notice uh, some, yeah, some change around the mouth. And mm. I imagine you look a lot younger than you am. Mm -hmm. Then you are. And what was the change? Is it the lines look different? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The lines. Uh -huh. The lines. Yeah. Because yeah. you cannot notice the change. Ah. Kind okay. of a memory. Yes. Yes. Uh, I I notice your um, top. And I imagine it's very comfortable and soft. I notice your mouth and I imagine I tend to copy what you are saying to make it easier for myself. Um, 
I notice your mouth. And I imagine you're breathing heavy. I notice your shoulders and I imagine you're breathing heavy too. <laughs> <laughs> I notice your nose and I imagine you like smelling flowers. I notice your face and I imagine you weren't just honest. Mm. I notice your nose and I'm curious. I imagine I want to see what's behind the screen behind you, the, the wall. I notice your teeth and I imagine I appreciate you for saying that. Mm. I notice your cheeks and I imagine there's piles of clothing and some mess behind you <laughs> that you're covering with the... <laughs> I notice your eyes and I, uh, I imagine I feel a lot of joy, you not knowing what's behind the screen. Yeah. Hmm. Yes, that's a, a beautiful game. We could go on for this with this a long time. And this is an invitation yeah. for the viewer, for the for you who sees that to practice that too, maybe. And mm. uh, my idea in, in doing a practice like this with you was like introduce something so that people who would like to take part in one of your courses and don't dare to, mm. that they see, oh, mm -hmm. that's okay. I can do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate you for proposing that. And, and and the main thing with this exercise for me is that we do have a lot of like imaginations and we notice things and then we notice another thing and rather than being quiet about it, let's just put it all out there, whatever it is. And and it can be positive, negative or something else. Um, and we do have this monkey chatter in our minds and it's not very important and only it becomes important when we make it important that all the random thoughts we have are somehow relevant they're not uh, we have ongoing that this chatter you know i i i uh, sit in a train i see somebody who i've never seen before and all of a sudden i already have like 20 thoughts about them oh they must be 45 I imagine they have three kids. I imagine they are stressed. I imagine they work in a bank. Da 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 da. da. Yeah, no yeah. clue. Yeah, if it's true or not. So, so this is what our system does. So, yeah. Yes. And and also, <clears throat> we are not always very skillful separating what is really a fact. Like like I even said that um, you notice a change is not a fact because you can only notice what is everything else is already a memory yes. which is relevant in a way that sometimes when people fight they fight over whose memory is actually right i you said this no i didn't yes you did no you did well our memories are very flawed so that's not even very important to argue about that rather it's like i i i feel hurt i feel upset i remember you saying something like this and i didn't like it i felt whatever angry upset not seen not understood not important yeah yeah that is easy to caught to this arguing about what happened in the past yeah it re requires this an away hmm? it requires yeah, an away consciousness um to to really stay present and uh like like an anchor anchor yourself in the, in the presence and i guess those exercises you offer are exactly to learn this to like mm -hmm. uh, strengthen the muscle as i like to say the muscle of staying yeah. present yeah and to yeah. realize yeah. that's what just came up when you were talking to realize that i'm even projecting on my thoughts we tend to mm. project things on other people 
but I even mm -hmm. project on my thoughts like um, the story you just said like the person in the train I imagine a beautiful man like in, in my sense a beautiful man yeah. and, and and spinning a story and like 10 minutes uh, later I'm already married with this man because I would love to to, to have this happen and then I'm projecting on my thoughts like yeah, oh, yeah. This, this would be beautiful to be married with this guy and then so uh, okay I need to get to know him how how am I going to do this and then my whole nervous system gets up um, and, and, and excited and and then I, I'm afraid I, I can't even talk to this guy because I want to yeah. get to ma marry him <laughs> so yeah yeah and then I he opens his mouth open mouth if he opens his mouth you're like ah no <laughs> so yeah yeah that's it, it is beautiful that we have this imaginary system and it, it of course can bring a lot of joy and then i think the issue comes when we believe it's true all those <laughs> all, all this stuff that comes and goes yeah or that is important <laughs> i was i was laughing a bit when when you said something like you don't believe me and i had this very vivid picture of you like almost tucking a, a dandy um dandelion into your nose like a, a yellow flower <laughs> that's you were interesting. smelling it so close yeah yes it is not important and still it's interesting like to to if you explain what was actually picturesque going on in your head what you actually pictured yeah. yes i appreciate you for saying that yeah yeah. we don't know what's going on beside behind yeah. those faces in their heads yeah. and it's it's beautiful to to uh, have somebody who's honest about that and then you get to know the other person better and better yeah yeah and i did think at one point uh but it just didn't come out as a, a first thought in the exercise like okay is your nose big do i judge your nose to be big because that's something i never thought about until you uh, uh, shared what this woman said and I was like uh, maybe a little bit and it's not really uh, coming to me very strong <laughs> so that was also going through me and I, I I didn't feel that I was like avoiding it it just in that moment when I noticed your nose it wasn't there yes yeah and, and I want to share that that was something that went through my system as okay well. okay yeah and I really realize a behavioral pattern inside of myself that I use um, to to cope with that. So my my head mm -hmm. was right away was saying, well, I learned that uh, we stop growing, but our noses and our ears biologically they continue growing until yeah. we die. Yeah. So my yeah, head yeah, was yeah. was thinking <clears throat> was thinking that to make myself calm down to not be hurt by I have a big nose. Yeah. You get it? So my, my system was already reacting when you started to talk. So how can I protect myself to not make myself feel hurt that my nose is probably a little bit bigger? <laughs> so that yeah. was interesting to notice inside of myself. How, yeah. how am I protecting myself so that I can stay calm and don't have to push you away because I project onto you the potential to hurt me and I don't want to be hurt so I have to get rid of you totally and then I will never feel hurt again right instead of and, and contacting in you and saying Tulia I resent yeah. you for saying my nose is big yeah, and yeah yeah would you be willing to stay and to listen to my resentment and maybe mm. change the um, experience in my nervous system that if I tell you that and you don't run away and my nervous system is like, wow, she's staying. She's not running in a away and I don't have to push her away. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and you were expressing your resentment about, for example, somebody say that your nose is big. It's kind of establishing the healthy separation that you are you and they are them and that's their opinion it's not really you and staying in contact too so both happens like there is you're not one you're separate and yes. you stay in contact because many times we don't have that healthy separation when we tend to internalize things so people say all kinds of random stuff and then we take it as 
like something really important and maybe they just it was just a throwaway thing yeah rather than ah okay i am i you are you that's your opinion yes i appreciate you so much for what you just said and i think it's very i, I imagine it's very very essential to to stay conscious about the fact we have to be too clearly separated to get in contact yeah. at all yeah <laughs> Yeah. But one is only possible with the other. Contact yeah. is only possible through two separated people. Yeah. And as we yeah. tend to get into a symbiosis, there's yeah. no contact anymore. It's not possible. Yeah. Yeah. We don't kind of see the other because we are making them part of us. And that's very normal and typical. And that's how we tend to be, especially in a very close relationships like at some points, maybe parent-child or uh, romantic relationships. And then I think the point is to, to have that awareness, like, whoa, okay, this is a bit too entangled. There is a you and there is a me, and yes. they are not the same. Yes. yes, to experience the wave of being close and being separate, and that's life. Yeah. Life is- Yeah, and we can even be close while being two separate entities. So it doesn't mean that we cannot feel very close to each other. But it's yes. just not mismatched of if I do X immediately, Y happens in you. And that kind of thing is, is not there. Yes. Oh, wow. I have the feeling we, uh, the, I imagine we got to a very essential point with this conversation. And I have my watch here and I think it's a good right. time. Okay. <laughs> For Ronnie Yeah, well, there's side. definitely many, many more of, uh, exercises and experiences and I, I I like the way this kind of quite organically started with your experience of the past and, and do you dare to do the I notice I match and game now what do, what yes. do you think Anya yes mm -hmm. well right now I do <laughs> yeah. Yeah. maybe in another state of day I, I won't and I will accept that too yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there is so much more to experience and maybe we can meet again in this format. We'll see. Sure. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Thank Thanks you so for much for your time. 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 You're welcome. I have have a good day. You too. <laughs> and see you soon. Great. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs>